Christina Institute for Reproductive Health. Kimberly, please say a few words for us. Thank you. Absolutely. All right. It's cold out here, but we are warm in our, in our hearts, and we are warm in our struggle for justice. Um, I am here today as a millennial, as a Latina, as a woman of color, and I want to say that much has been said about millennials and Roe. And I will say, to hopefully settle the question, Roe matters to us. Woo! matters to us. We care about keeping abortion safe and legal, and in fact, we care about making abortion safe and legal for women today who do not have true access. And I will say that Roe is always on my calendar. I'm happy to be out here with all of you today. And while Roe is on my calendar, the story in my heart is always Rosie Jimenez. And it is in honor of Rosie Jimenez um, that I really want to dedicate my, uh, my, my appearance here today and to tell a little bit about her story and what it reminds us about how we need to make Roe real for women who today don't have access. Rosie Jimenez was a Latina, a mother of a young daughter, a teaching student who, in the years after Roe, needed an abortion. But unfortunately, because of the mean-spirited Hyde Amendment, an attack on low-income women of color that was designed to take away their decision-making power, even though Roe was the law of the land, Rosie Jimenez could not get the abortion she needed. Because of the Hyde Amendment, she was forced to seek a back alley procedure, and she lost her life. She was the first known victim of the Hyde Amendment, and a reminder that even after Roe became law, for many women, Roe has not yet become real. And I'm excited that there is momentum today for our side to be proactive, for our side to be positive, and articulate our values and our vision for a future where every woman can make the decisions she needs to make for her and her future. Que sigue la lucha por salud, dignidad y justicia. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for all the work that you do and your organization does. Next up, I'd like to call Diane Phillips. She is on the DCAF, the DC Abortion Fund Board. Thank you so much for being here, Diane. The DC Abortion Fund is an all-volunteer organization. It was formed in 1996. And um, I want you to know that we're a member of the network of, of National Network of Abortion Funds. There's a hundred funds of, like us all around the United States. And it used to be that it was just funds that would pop up across the country just in need. Sometimes they would come and, and stay for a couple of years. Sometimes they would endure. And we've had to endure most, most recently because of the economic downturn. Back in 2006, only eight years ago, we made pledges to 42 women and girls and funded 26 abortions to the tune of $4,500. This last year, we made pledges to 750 women and girls, Whoa. and we paid for 600 abortion care procedures Woo! at the tune of $132,000. And we're just a little all-volunteer fund. Now, across the nation, according to the National Network of Abortion Funds, 100,000 women and girls asked for assistance last year, but they o only one out of seven could be helped. Funding is still a big issue for abortion care in the United States. I still think it's ridiculous that at 2014, we're still arguing whether or not abortion care should be part of the basic reproductive health care for women and girls in this country. We still have cities and states and folks in the federal advocacy are trying to get Medicaid, trying to get some way for women to be able and girls to be able to afford their chosen health care. That way we can all mother with dignity. We can all respect pregnancy and all of complexity and allow people to take care of the families that they already have. So for those of you that want to know more information about the DC Abortion Fund, what we do, my colleagues on the board, Colin is here and Karen is here. My name is Diana. Thank you for your support. If you supported us in the past, if you haven't yet but would like to, please do. Thank you so much for coming out today. This is very, very important and this is still an issue that will remain salient for a very long time. Woo! Thank you, Diane. Thank you so much for the work that you do for women and women around the country. I next want to call up Bonnie Gravenhofer now as Action Vice President. She and her staff are responsible for all the amazing things that we did today, earlier in the day here at the Supreme Court, and for this vigil that we're holding. Bonnie. Woo! Woo! Yeah, Bonnie. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I want to thank you for coming out on this very, very cold day. Your presence here is testament to how important Roe v. Wade is to, to women's lives. And I'm so pleased that you're here to remind the court and the state and federal legislature, 
legislatures and and the voters how critical Roe v. Wade is. Thank you so much. Women have taken a beating in the state legislatures. Over 200 abortion restrictions were passed in just the last three years, which is more than the entire preceding decade. Uh, we're here to say enough is enough. Did this, not only do we need to stop those restrictions, we need to remove those restrictions. It's so hard to turn a page when you're uh, <laughs> got gloves and hand warmers, so just talk among yourselves for a moment. <laughs> Women need to have abortions whenever they need them, not before some arbitrary number of weeks. in their community, not have it closed for some ridiculous trap laws that has absolutely nothing to do with uh, women's health, but everything to do with trying to close a clinic. Woo! Those trap laws endanger women's lives. They don't protect them. Women need to have more rights to control their own bodies than a fetus. And women need abortion and birth control coverage the same way they get the rest of their health care. No matter which company, which agency, which nonprofit provides their health care coverage. Woo! 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 More restrictions are being introduced in state legislatures this year and will be on state ballots in November. We need to mobilize every pro-choice voter to defeat them in every state where they think it's okay to vote on whether women get to decide for themselves when and under what circumstances they can have abortion. We need to fight back for Roe, state by state, to stop Roe restrictions until every woman has the right to make her own decisions. We need to stop Roe restrictions. Repeat it with me. Stop, stop Roe restrictions! here today. Uh, I've never lived anywhere where it's been, you know, less than 50 degrees in the winter. So this to me is like, it is Arctic. So thank you for being here. Thank you for your commitment to have to, to women having access and not just women. It's trans men. It's gender non-conforming folks that need access Woo! to abortion care. It is so important that we make this part of our reproductive health care system. As Bonnie said, it's just ridiculous that we're still discussing and debating this today in 2014. This is part and parcel of reproductive health care and every person who needs access should have access. Right. We need to repeal Hyde. We need to make sure that these state ballot initiatives do not pass. We need to stand up and say to people who are telling us it's not okay to have these rights to basic health care that they are wrong and we are on the side that is winning. And we are going to do this in 2014 and then in 2016 we're going to do it again and we're going to keep doing it and we're going to keep telling them they're wrong and we're going to keep showing them that we are on the side that is right and we are going to get rights and access for everyone who needs it thank you everyone thank you so much Chitra. okay before we leave i just have a message for all of the catholic bishops for all of the knights of columbus that funded this big march for life if you haven't seen the expose by Catholics for Choice, go on their website and read it about Knights of Columbus and how they have, have pumped millions into stopping women from having adequate health care, and they don't even allow women into membership of their ranks. To all of those men, and to the men like Antonin Scalia, and John Roberts, and Samuel Alito, and, and uh, Clarence Thomas, I say this, your time has come and gone. Woo! of history. Right. The voters are with us. The majority of men are with us and the sisters will not be divided against our brothers in this fight. We are in this fight together until we win. Until every woman has the right to have the 
children she wants, to raise the children she has, <laughs> to plan her own family, and to make her own health care decisions until we guarantee that for every woman, no matter where she's from, or how much money she has, or who she loves, we will not stop demonstrating and working for women's rights. Thank you all so much. Now let's go get warm somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, do we need another picture? Do you guys want to take a picture? Yeah.